A lot of young lawyers around the place have a tendency to ask this question, which is, when should I start my own firm? It's an interesting thing. I've seen a lot of discussions about it, uh, in particular in the United States. It is a lot more prevalent for a young lawyer to go ahead and start their own firm almost straight out of law school. Um, In Australia, it's far, far less common, and a lot of young lawyers go and work for a firm first before they even begin to contemplate it. But what I have seen, uh, the fruit of going to start your own firm and run your own firm, or particularly too early, can be a little bit bad. So let's talk about that. My name is Chris Hargraves, this is the Tips for Lawyers podcast, and welcome. Thank you for tuning in and listening to this episode. I recognize, as many people do, that a law degree probably doesn't equip you with all of the necessary skills needed to function as a lawyer. And so sometime between graduating as a lawyer, getting admitted as a lawyer, and ultimately being largely effective as a lawyer, and I use that sort of phrasing advisedly because, in my view, there is always scope for improvement, as I think most sensible people would agree. There's a tipping point at which you are sufficiently competent, probably, to start your own firm. The question is when and whether your confidence in your own abilities is necessarily reflective of the accurate truth about them. Because what I have seen is a number of younger practitioners start their own firms where they are the primary decision maker. Perhaps they take on staff. Perhaps they're doing so because they have that sort of confidence that allows them to market particularly effectively. But sometimes... They have done so before they've had enough mentoring and enough stable, wise assistance through their formative years to allow them to reliably and regularly make sound decisions and ethical decisions sometimes and to run their firms in a way that is appropriate for a profession. Now, I use that word profession, some people probably think that is a little old-fashioned at this point, that lawyers are really functionally no different from anyone else. I don't necessarily agree with that. I think there are big overlaps, of course, between the service lawyers provide and many others. But the truth is, to thrive as a lawyer, you need not only be able to deliver the legal services and a certain amount of Uh, confidence in your marketing abilities in order to have the opportunity to deliver those legal services, but you need to be able to do so in a way that is ethically sound and that is professional. And learning what is and is not professional or ethically sound or even just common good sense in a variety of different situations you're likely to face as a lawyer actually takes some time. The principal reason being, of course, that you don't come across every situation immediately, and so you don't have that opportunity to learn. But when you're on your own and the sort of buck stops with you, you are the only person upon whom the decision rests, it can get a little bit challenging, I guess I would say, for you to make good decisions. So there are ways to mitigate that, of course. If you have a solid business mentor who ideally is a lawyer themselves with whom you can regularly catch up and reflect and you rely on them and trust them and they are prepared to give you that time and assistance, then that can certainly help. But I think the question you need to be asking, if you're contemplating going out to start a firm on your own, even aside from the obvious stuff, you know, the financial risks, the ability to market your services and get clients and the general operations of a law firm, understanding how it functions as a business, supplying those principles of leverage and the ability to generate revenue and understanding, all that sort of stuff. Even if you get all of that, I think one of the core questions you need to be asking is, 
whether your head is screwed on well enough that you have had a broad enough range of experiences and opportunities to learn from more senior practitioners, not all of whom, by the way, will necessarily be good models to learn from, as I've discussed in the past. But have you had enough of those where you get it? You get the things that you need to get, like mouthing off at someone in a conference just because you don't like what they said is not necessarily the wisest decision. And that your ego isn't necessarily the most important thing to be verbalized in the room. And that the way you write your correspondence reflects on you as a professional, irrespective of how passionately you wish to defend your client's interests. And that you cannot threaten things for which there is absolutely no legal basis to do so. These sorts of things are things that I have a tendency to see creep in more regularly, not exclusively, of course, but more regularly from practitioners who haven't had the kind of steady professional guidance that they might have benefited from before they decided to go out on their own. Or perhaps they are younger practitioners and they don't have sufficient mentoring and guidance inside their own firms. These are the sorts of things to think about. I know that the most common considerations are going to be those other ones I mentioned about marketing and clients and revenue and finances and all that sort of stuff. But you need to ask the question and you need to be self-aware enough to know, am I going to be able to deal with those situations where it gets a little bit ambiguous or where someone asks me to do those difficult things and I need to be able to say no to them in my passionate desire to represent my clients and my desire to represent them well and forcefully and to demonstrate my ability to do so to them as they see the way in which I'm delivering my services to them. Can I balance those interests which are sometimes competing and do so in a way that will only ultimately reflect positively on me as a professional and positively on the profession of lawyers around the state and around the country? Interesting things to think about, sometimes a little bit challenging. And I'm not particularly saying that a young person cannot have those qualities, nor am I saying that you cannot get those qualities faster. You just need to assess, is the way I conduct myself going to carry me through those sorts of situations? Have a think about it. I won't waffle on any more about that now because we have been here for long enough. If you enjoy this podcast, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to leave comments and all that sort of stuff. It's always lovely when you do, and I shall see you next time.